Hi kids, it's time to learn about the bodies of water with Leo and Max. Let's go guys! Water is one of the most important natural resources on Earth. Our planet is covered by over 70% water and it is home to many water animals and plant species. Access to water is essential to people because in order to grow, we need to sustain our bodies with water. Large bodies of water contain resources vital to human societies. Fishes and shellfish are important because they are very high in protein and vitamins that benefit human development. Water is also essential in transporting large things over great distances. Ocean Oceans, the largest bodies of water, cover more than two-thirds of the Earth's surface. An ocean is a vast body of salt water that surrounds a continent. There is one world ocean, but it is divided into five main areas, the Pacific, the Atlantic, the Indian, the Arctic, and the Southern or Antarctic. Together, they can be seen as one world ocean because they have no real borders and water flows freely between them. Winds and other forces cause ocean water to be constantly in motion. Large amounts of ocean water move around Earth in patterns called currents and they may be warm or cold. Tides are another way that ocean water moves. Tides are the rise and fall of ocean levels that happen throughout the day. On a beach, for example, the ocean covers more sand at high tide than at low tide. Living things inhabit all levels of Earth's oceans. Ocean plants grow fairly close to the water's surface because they need sunlight to stay alive. Like ocean plants, most ocean animals live in shallower water. This is because there are more plants and animals to eat near the water's surface. The world's oceans are important to life on Earth. Oceans are a great source of food for people around the world. They also provide minerals, oil, and natural gas. Fun fact! Did you know? Phytoplankton and algae create much of the world's oxygen. Sea A sea is also a body of salt water, partly or completely surrounded by land and often connected to the ocean. Seas are generally smaller than oceans. The sea moderates Earth's climate and has important roles in the water cycle, carbon cycle, and nitrogen cycle. Winds blowing over the surface of the sea produce waves, which break when they enter the shallow water. Winds also create surface currents through friction, setting up slow but stable circulations of water throughout the oceans. Like oceans, the tide caused by Earth's rotation and gravitational effects of the moon is a natural occurrence at sea. A wide variety of organisms, including bacteria, algae, plants, fungi, and animals live in the sea, which offers a wide range of marine habitats and ecosystems. The sea provides substantial supplies of food for humans, mainly fish, but also shellfish, mammals, and seaweed, whether caught by fishermen or farmed underwater. Other human uses of the sea include trade, travel, mineral extraction, power generation, warfare, and leisure activities such as swimming, sailing, and scuba diving. Fun fact! Did you know there are more historic artifacts under the sea than in all of the world's museums? River A river is a large natural stream of water that flows over land. Even though rivers hold only a tiny fraction of Earth's total water, they have always been essential to human civilization. Rivers carry fresh water to people, plants, and animals all across Earth, and they provide people with a method of transport and water power. They also shape the land by carving out valleys and canyons. A river begins as a tiny trickle of water on high ground. The water may come from rainfall fall, from melting snow or ice, or from underground through a spring. As the trickle runs downhill, it combines with other trickles. It may be a stream, a brook, or a creek. Eventually, the creek grows into a river. In its upper course, the river flows rapidly then cuts through the land and picks up soil and gravel. The moving water and the material it carries wear away even more rock and soil. Over thousands or millions of years, the river creates canyons and deep valleys in this way. 
In its middle course, the river flows down gentler slopes. It gets larger and slower. Soil, gravel, and sand begin to sink to the bottom. Some of these materials builds up to form sandbars and islands. And in its lower course, the river flows even more slowly. It drops still more solid material. Some material is carried all the way to the mouth, the place where the river enters the sea. Fun fact! Did you know? The longest river in the world is River Nile. It can be found in Egypt. Lake A lake is a large body of water that is surrounded by land. Lakes contain less than 1% of the world's fresh water, but they are a very important fresh water source. Almost all of the world's fresh water is either frozen in huge masses of ice or buried underground. Lakes contain more than 98% of the fresh water that is still available for use. Thousands of years ago, the glaciers moved slowly over the land. They dug basins or holes in places where the rocks at the surface were weak. Some lakes have been formed by volcanoes. Some volcanoes have blown off their tops in huge explosions. Others have had their centers collapse. Both of these events form large pits called craters. Freshwater lakes have many important uses. Cities and towns depend on them for drinking water. Boaters and swimmers use lakes for recreation. Fun fact! Did you know? The lowest lake in the world is the Dead Sea, located on the edge of Israel and Jordan. It is one of the saltiest lakes in the world where people can easily float on its surface. Pond a pond is also surrounded on all sides by land and is typically smaller than a lake. Many lakes and ponds are human-made. Ponds are watery habitats that provide good conditions for many types of living things. The way that a pond and all its inhabitants exist together is an example of an ecosystem. Plants that live in ponds are specially adapted to suit permanently wet conditions. They grow beside a pond and then provide shelter for animals such as frogs and nesting birds. Ponds are more than just stagnant bodies of water. They actually serve many different purposes. Some ponds are created purely for aesthetic reasons like water gardens, koi ponds, and most backyard ponds, while other ponds are created for water treatment or habitat restoration. Fun fact! Did you know? Pond snails are not only neat little creatures, but they also control algae by eating it off frogs and plants to help keep your pond clean. That's a great thing if you have an overabundance of algae. Lagoon a lagoon is a shallow body of salt water along a coastal area. It is usually separated from the deeper sea by a shallow or exposed barrier beach area. A lagoon is a pool or lake of relatively shallow, quiet water that is normally connected to the sea but separated from it by sandbars, barrier islands, or coral reefs. Fun fact! Did you know? There are man-made lagoons too. People build the lagoons for managing the wastewater. The example of the man-made lagoon include the anaerobic lagoon. Cove a cove is a small circular or oval inlet along a coastal area. The water is partly enclosed by land formed by soft rock. Coves provided access to fish and other seafood. Coves usually form through the process of weathering. Weathering is the process of breaking down or dissolving rocks on Earth's surface. Rain, wind, ice, chemicals, and even plants can weather rock. Coves can be excellent harbors because coves are small, sheltered inlets that can protect boats from storms and the powerful waves of the ocean. Fishing villages are often found in coves because of the protection and easy access to the ocean. Fun fact! Did you know? Lulworth Cove is one of the world's finest examples of a cove and is declared a World Heritage Site. It is a tourist location with approximately 500,000 visitors every year. Gulf a gulf is a part of a sea or ocean that extends into land, forming a large coastal indentation. The gulf may be connected to the sea or ocean directly or may be separated by a smaller body of water such as the strait. Gulfs form in many ways, including from erosion during a period of lower sea level and from tectonic activity along fractures, faults, and rifts. Fun fact! Did you know? The Gulf of Mexico is one of the largest and oldest water bodies on Earth. Well, that's all I have for you today about the bodies of water, kids. I hope you learned a lot.
Thank you for watching. Please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell to be notified of new videos. Bye friends!